Okay, okay, okay. I just want to make sure that I am actually live and that everything is working as it should. Here we go. I think my sound is good. I think everything else is fine. Welcome, everybody. Just one thing to change. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Apologies to those who are watching uh, on YouTube. Aha, there we go. Welcome everybody to the George McQuenna Live Show. Uh, this is just a show where I speak a little bit about um, some of the topics that have caught my eye during the week. And then of course we all in group work it uh, together on the normal show later on when I'm live. Tonight we're going to be live watching Orlando Pirates playing their match. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. My name is George McQuenna. Now guys, um, these are just a couple of topics that I want to speak about. We're speaking about four things today. Uh, top of the list is... Atazwane versus Dr. Kumalo over the past few weeks and I think uh, yesterday Mike McCabe also added his, uh, added his voice to this conversation and this debate uh, speaking about whether Utemba Zwane, how does Temba Zwane measure up versus Dr. Kumalo because a lot of people are saying that Temba Zwane is the new Dr. Kumalo and all of that. And I have some thoughts. I have some thoughts about that. Uh, we, we did have a similar conversation during the GOAT debate that we had on my live show, my other live show, um, that is available on YouTube. But my thoughts are very simple. I'm going to start it off by saying that, guys, football has improved. Technology has improved. The things players are being asked to do and how they are taught and what they need to do has gotten better. So at least on that level, we should understand that maybe fundamentally at the top end of players, right, will be better than the other. Doctor could be doing bits in this football. I'm not saying that he's completely out of it, but he's not playing now. So the type of things that Temba Zwane has access to, the resources, the coaching, all of that stuff, probably wasn't to that level when Abo Doctor were playing. That's number one. I just want to say it. So the comparison is a little bit unfair on that point. But the, the big thing that I want to speak about today is, guys, uh, I think this is a disingenuous question when we ask it. And the reason why I think it's disingenuous and it's unfair is because we, we move goalposts. We move them around. What are we basing this conversation on? What are we saying is the key criteria where uh, we can say that Doc is better than Zwane or either way, whichever way it goes. And I think that's where the problem with this conversation comes. If it's accolades, guys, if it's accolades, Zwane might have been a bit part player in 2016, but he's got a Champions League. Zwane's got leagues in a row. Zwane's got an AFL to his name. Zwane plays for what? The most dominant force in SA football that I think we have ever seen to this level in terms of the league. So, can, are we saying that all of those things don't count? Or is the real conversation that, guys, we love these players. We love these players. We love them, we think about them, we, we idolize them. It's hard for you to come in and tell me that somebody's better. You hear about the debates, Sabo Messi, Livo, eh, eh, Maradona, eh, and all of those guys. You hear about those conversations and you're like, hey man, you, gotta, you guys have a love for these players. And that is what is stopping you. And who can blame you, right? But I think the biggest problem when we talk about uh, these conversations, Zwane versus Doc, uh, Jomo Sono versus Doc. Uh, was Jomo Sono better than Shuz Mushkewu? Was these guys that... When you speak about those things, I think the biggest difference is that there's myths and legends that exist. There's myths and legends. And the myths and legends are what color what we see now. I don't remember a lot of Doc's games. I don't remember watching many of Doc's games. I was probably too young to absorb it the way I should have. So me coming here and telling you that Doc is the best, what is that based on? What, what information are you bringing to that outside of myths and legends that we've been told? Think about uh, Upratyom. 
uh, 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 Pirates legend, legendary South African player. All of those things we say about him. Have you seen a game? One game, let's say 90 minutes. Just 90 minutes of Dr. Jomo, Upra Jomo Sono, in order for you to say that he's the best. He's the best of all time and all of that stuff. Or are you basing your opinion on the myths and the legends? Is your opinion of Temba Zwani right now colored by the fact that you see him every day? I can remember vividly one of the games where he played badly, two of the games where he played, played badly. I can remember full on his matches. Gutiazi, Utemba Zwani, when he played for Ibafana Bafana versus uh, Algeria, he was hot for a half of football, disappeared for the second half. Are those the type of things that are coloring how we think about it? And in 15 years from now, 15 years from now, will you be able to confidently just say that? Like, will you be able to say, uh, you know, Temba Zwani on the 18th of December, he had a very bad game? Or will the story be 15 years from now that Temba Zwani is a multiple league winner? He won it seven times in a row. Uh, he's got a Champions League. Uh, he's, he's, he, he came third with Bafana Bafana AFCON, and there'll be a story told about that one. They were unfancied. Nobody loved them. Nobody saw them coming. He won an AFL with Sundowns. 20 years from now, it's not going to matter that he had a bad game versus Amazul. But right now, when we're, when we're consuming that stuff right now, there tends to be a little bit of a bias where we hurt these players as well by saying that, no, he, he wasn't so good because but when you speak about Dr. Kumalo, you don't have that same recollection. We don't have the stories. When you look it up on the internet, I can't find the, uh, uh, all of the games that, that uh, uh, Dr. Kumalo played. But I can tell you that I've watched a lot more Tembas One than I've watched Dr. Kumal. So I want us to think about this. And I want us to think about that when we get into the secondary part of this talk. And I want to expand it. We're going to start, we started off with Tembas One versus Dr. Kumalo and what are the pros and cons of that conversation. Now, I want to speak about in general. Can we trust our memories? Can we trust that the PSL that I remember, as a PSL be Nandi, these people are doing this, these people are doing that. Can we say with good conscience that we know and understand and had insight in football and had the technologies and the stats and the numbers and even had access for me to out and out say that guys in PSL in 2005, yeah, it was so good compared to now. And I wanted to bring it into the scope of the conversation we're having about uh, uh, Temba Zwani and, and, and Dr. Kumal, right? I, I wanted to bring it into that conversation because it's a big part of it. Why do we think about that time, those times, you know, uh, old people will tell you about Jomo Sono's time. That was the real PSL. Uh, they didn't get a chance to go and play international and do all of that, but that was the PSL. Then the 80s people will come, then the 90s people will come, then the 2010s people. I'm one of the people that advocates for the early 2000s. But I started thinking to myself, actually, guys, I was an SABC watcher. We didn't have DSTV at home. So I started interrogating myself and going, hi, hey man, back then, I could really only watch two matches in a weekend then you'd hope for Ama Highlights on Soccer Zone. And we had a conversation about this earlier in the group. We're going to have it on Friday as well. But how much did I see of Richard Henyekan? Mulondo Shikwivilu, Rodzandra Muzuli, Moses Pandil, Klein Boy Taibos, Papi Zotwan. How much did I see of these players for me to categorically say that I, Yazi, hey, this thing is so bad. Were those times that good? Or are we looking at just a situation where we just have more info? I can watch repeat on repeat on repeat of the games on DSTV. I can watch any of the games on DSTV. There's more channels and more opportunities to see other teams. 
Because that's what I fear is happening when we have these conversations about whether things were better. Or are we seeing at this from the lens, are we looking at this from the lens of uh, uh, you only used to watch, you only watch when the big teams play. And you don't have opportunities afterwards. Bosoka zone. I, I, I've said before that one of the, the failures of media and where media must be held accountable in this time is that we don't know. I can't compare Chiefs now versus Chiefs back then versus Chiefs in the 90s because we just don't have access to any of that information. We don't have access to any of that footage. We don't get shown that footage. I have come here and I've said before that I can see all 272 goals that o -O 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 Thierry Henry scored for Arsenal. Arsenal is my favorite team. I couldn't watch Arsenal up until late 2000s. But I know and I've seen it. Now, when we compare that to our teams right now, can you remember Mbesuma's goals, guys? Can you remember Mbesuma's goals? Can you remember seeing them? Can you tell me when he broke the record what goal number uh, 38 looked like? So how then can we compare? Can you say with your chest that this group of this generation of players is that good or that generation of players is that oh this generation is that bad or that generation is that good what's even worse is that even back then there wasn't even a chance for Abu Kef Abu Chiefs and Abu Pirates weren't playing Kef like that they weren't serious about Kef like that maybe Pirates but not Chiefs and they were the teams that were number one most of the times Mamelu Sundowns used to win the league a lot we don't even know how they fared that side Think about it. just Just think about that. We don't know how they fared in CAF. We don't know what the Confed was doing, those teams that were finishing number two. Can you tell me what Bitvest Vitz did after winning the league? Or Super Sports in the three times that they won the league? So are we having these conversations in good faith when we speak about this? And maybe the question should be, are we maybe perhaps being too harsh on our players? Maybe that is because we've got so much more information on these here players. I can go look up transfer market and see exactly what a player's been doing, how many minutes they've played, where they've scored, what games they scored. And I can look that up right now if I'm making an argument. We can't do that with the older players. In fact, go look for the guys. Go, go look for the guys. Go, go try find stats on Jabulani Mendu. I dare you. Go, go internet, internet search, Google them and see what you come back with. So now can we make a comparison or is it similar to the conversation we had about Zwani and, and Dr. Kumalo where uh, Uzwani maybe is just being hurt because we see him more. And because we see him more, he's human to us. He's closer to us. Simbugela Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Hey, we watch it over and over. We watch press conferences. We see behind the scenes, Ponama training. Guys, do we have a training clip of VK's Achieves? Do we have a training clip of Ikeza Chiefs from 1993? Do we have full matches that we see on a regular basis? And it's not to say that our players are good. It's not to say that those are bad. I'm just saying that when we do go into these conversations, can we make sure that we're having these conversations uh, uh, earnestly? Go to the PSL archive. You can find them at the SABC offices. Zaizo. That is my point here. That is, that is exactly my point. I don't have to do that to go see Henri's goals. I don't even know where the FA... I don't even know where the FA offices in England are. But I can tell you about Alan Shearer's goals. I can tell you about Henri's goals. And maybe the conversation is a bigger one to say. What, what is the media? What, what are we doing in order to create that love of our football? to create opportunities for us to have these conversations in full. What are we doing? Why is that information gatekept? How should I fall in love with a team, with a player, with whatever, if I can't even watch them? Forget about the mid-2000s, guys. Banyana Banyana, Banyana Banyana is the current reigning WEFCON, or the current reigning WEFCON champions. They are current. When last did you see a Banyana Banyana goal? 
My father, my father made it to the semi-finals of the AFCON, won a bronze medal. Tell me the last time you saw one of the goals that was scored by Bafana Bafan. And yet we come and we have these conversations in blind spots. Myself included. I'm, I'm putting myself into this. In blind spots. I've long said that the PSL for me was so great in 2005 and 2000s. That's where it, it, it peaked. Honestly speaking, I can't remember a lot of those games. So what am I basing my opinions on? Am I basing it on the fact that I can watch Irichard's Bay today? Am I basing it on the fact that I can watch K's Chiefs over and over and over and over and wake up at 2 a.m. and watch it repeat and wake up at 5, at 7, at 9, at 11? We can see the highlights. We have these conversations. We have all of this stuff. And again, guys, I'm not making the argument that who's better or not. I'm just saying that when we have these conversations, can we have the full conversations? When we say Zwane versus Dr. Kumalo, can we put it down? Maybe Zwane is not worthy of Dr. Kumalo. Maybe Doctor is not worthy of Zwani, but then when, what are we basing these things on outside of highlights? You know, we saw uh, my highlights where, where AFCON, 1996. Hey, he played versus Brazil that one time. It was great. Maybe the older gents can remember some of the games. But that's what I wanted to say. I feel like we're not having the conversations in full. And um, that is something that we need to not only question ourselves, but also question our football. What type of things are being done to preserve the football? To make sure that a new generation understands that Mbesuma was a very good striker. That when you call Leslie Maniatella golden boot, we're calling it that because of X, Y, and Z, one, two, and three. This is what you can see. That, I think, deepens a love for a football. That deepens a connection with the game. That maybe even makes us ask the right questions of the new teams and the new players and the new squads and all of that stuff. Are you guys doing how are you guys doing enough to make sure that those things are preserved? And even us when we speak about it, guys, I could only watch three matches on a weekend and then highlights on soccer zones. Soccer zone. Only. What's to say? What's to say? And maybe that's what's holding back our, our football. Maybe our administrators back then were not that good. Maybe there was something else that was happening, but we don't have the information. In fact, it's a bigger conversation about information in general in the PSL. We don't know how much players earn. We don't know how much coaches earn. We don't know what contracts look like, yet we have conversations every single day. Uh, these are the things that we should be asking. But I'm going to move on uh, for time's sake and bring in a conversation. Um, I've been seeing from us Chiefs fans more specifically where we've been calling for Abo Mfundo Vilagazi to jump in. We've been calling for Abo Duba. We've been calling for Abo Zwani. But we haven't asked questions about these youngsters. And are we youngsters? And I want to broaden it by saying, are we serious about the development of these youngsters? Are we looking for saviors for today, saviors for this match, saviors for tomorrow, someone to do some 360s, trend on TikTok, then the next year, I say, boy, and we don't care. Are we serious enough about making sure that when I am a 22-year-old stepping into Kaiser Chiefs, I am ready? Notice, I haven't even said 19. I haven't even said 18, 16. Somebody last night was talking about um, Yamin Lamal. Is it Yamin Lamal at Barcelona? The 17-year-old that's cracking into Barcelona. is playing for Spain. He's doing all of those things. Are we doing enough to make sure that our youngsters are ready for that? Or are we, one, not developing them, them properly? So, for example, Fundo Villagazi may have all of the skills in the world, but does he have the, 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 the basics, the little skills, the scanning, Uktrepa, making intelligent runs, reading intelligent runs, doing all those things? When he walked into Kaiser Chiefs, when we're asking for him to start, 
I watched Shabalala over the past few games, and you can tell that Shabalala is a very talented player. Talented player. But you can also see who they man corner like shot a corner, man. Corner like shot a corner. Are we leaving it up to chance that these players uh, uh, can grow and adapt and get into the league, let alone go overseas? But secondly, are we creating environments where these players can be successful? I am asking Fundo Vilagazi to jump into a Chiefs pot where he clearly has no seniors around him to mentor him, to protect him, to be a structure. As we are asking players who are supposed to be cherries on top to be the whole cake. Because selfishly, we need something to feel good about. So are, we, are these players ready to take that on? And when they jump in, Fundo Villagas from DDC, jumping into a pot where, guys, let's be honest, and I'm going to use Chiefs as an example because I'm close to it uh, uh, as a fan. Guys, Chiefs is nine years without a trophy. Chiefs is not going to win a trophy this year. Chiefs is an in and out of players. Chiefs has people that play who don't deserve to be playing. Chiefs have so many problems that we're going to lump on Fundo's head and hope that Mfundo can take it. In fact, even worse than that, even worse than that, look at what happened to Shabalal. Shabalala came into a hot pot, excited us for a little bit. Couldn't win, but when, came, when push came to shove, they pushed him aside. He's what, 20, 1920 playing DDC games. When is he going to come in? Now, Babo, Abo, Abo, youngster, Beto, and Kosing Pilengob. Has been a youngster for years, Kosing Pilengob. How many years is he going to be a youngster and we're going to be expecting something? Now, happy Mashiach. Played in Chiefs' final, uh, got a red card in the final in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. That's three years ago. Is he still a youngster? What has happened to their development and growth? Do we have plans for these players? And I'm going to reference Sundowns again. Young Mabena, 17 years old, got brought into the first team. They, they gave him some game time. He still trains with the first team, but they're like, you know what, boy? Asik Rashi, guys. Asik Rashi. We don't want to rush you in. We don't want to make you have to carry loads that you're not going to carry. You're going to be a bit part player at best, but we're also going to make sure that you're playing under 17. You're in the philosophy of the team. You're in the structure of the team. That by the time you are 18, you've got first team minutes under your belt. You've got first team minutes under your belt. You're not getting used to the league having to save the team. And now we look league-wide. And it's not to say that I, I want to be harsh on the players. It, it's the reality of, are we developing these players for them to be the players that we want in the future? And maybe are we leaving it too late? Lamin Yamal is 17, playing in the first team of Barcelona, playing Champions League football, playing first-team football, playing for Spain, 17. That means up to 16, the development that should have happened, uh, that, that happened there was so strong and so structured and so proper and so technically sound and so everything that you could see a player come in at that age. Uh, Bukayo Saka started playing for Arsenal at 17. Yet we are still calling... Youngsters, we're still calling 22-year-olds youngsters. But a bigger issue other than that is, again, Mfuno Villagazi is promoted to the first team. First team. Doesn't play. Sits on the bench. Doesn't play the following year. Doesn't play the following year. What is that doing to his development? And what does that say about the planning that our teams do when it comes to these youngsters? Surely at this point in his career, if you're going to put him in the first team, and if you know that the first team is just a fire on fire on fire, Gyashisa, everything's burning, surely you send them out on loan. 
You see, I like what Pirates does. Send them to Super Sport. Kevin Hunt gets his hand on those players. They get to play some game time. They get to get some, get some game time under a coach who understands young players. By the time he comes back to Pirates, he's a little bit better. He's ready. But now we are asking 16, 17, 18, 19 year olds to walk into Kaiser Chiefs. Wandi Letuba is now being asked to carry the load for Kaiser Chiefs, to walk into Kaiser Chiefs. He's never played in the PSL. He's never played under the bright lights. The bright lights. He's never played with a team where he's going to, you know, he's going to trend. Xasa, Xasa, you're going to be trending when you do something wrong. You're going to be trending when you do something right. Are these players being readied? And while I'm here, I'd like to send a shout out to Abo Stellenbosch. I'd like to send a shout out to Abo Supersport and teams that are serious about, guys, when we're developing these players, we have to understand that these are youngsters. And I want us as fans to also understand that these are youngsters, guys. Mfundo is not going to change case achieves overnight. One delay Dubai is not going to change case achieves overnight. Relevo Khilem Fuking is not going to change Pirates overnight. All of these things are not going to happen at that pace. And I fear that we expect so much from these guys. And not only do we expect so much, we are so quick to kick them to the curb when it's not working out. That's the other part of this conversation. It was nice to ride it was nice to ride uh, Ushabalala last season when he was hot and all the teams loved him. It was great. And all the fans loved him. And he was trending every day and he was doing 360s and the fans were happy because ooh, at least we have something to be happy about. The moment things got tough, they sent him back. They sent him back to ETDC. The moment things got tough, he's on the bench. Labuela Kona onto the pitch, he's bound to make mistakes. He's going to be kicked to the curb again. Now I'm happy Mashian. Happy Mashian is so not trusted after being one of the players that played a lot in that year, year final under surprise, surprise to Kevin Hunt. But anyway, he, he's one of the players that is being overtaken by Shanti. Dove is in. They don't even trust him to put him. They don't even trust him to. They don't even trust to put him in right now. Kshisa. Dove say, oh, Shanti is in Will Mashian get a chance to play? No. So make a plan for them. Now Mumashad came and went, didn't get game time, had to go. Now Babo Abo Ditejan, Puso Ditejan, was sitting on the bench. Apparently, he was one of the best right backs. Go DDC. Now he's getting game time at TS Galaxy. That could have been something that Chiefs facilitated in order to make sure that we're getting back players that are ready. But the main thing here is that we need to speak about or we need to think about how we develop players, where we develop players. Are they good enough when they get here? And it's not the player's fault because the problem is that another problem is a lot of things in our league are by luck. A lot of things in our league are by luck. We are lucky to have a Temba Zwani who was lucky enough to develop a certain way in order to get to a place, who was, who was disciplined enough himself to do that, who wasn't drinking, who wasn't doing that. There's no guardrails. We are asking these guys to do it themselves. And Dushawalala is going to have to go do his own work in order to get better. It's not going to be done at the club. We are hoping that, you know, our players get taken earlier so they can go overseas, so they can go and develop properly because we can't do it. And you're going to get, it's going to be flashes and pans. It's going to be once in a lifetime players that go and do very well. And we're hoping that uh, Umfundo Vilagazi is the next one after hoping that Shabalala was the right one, after hoping that Nkosim Pilengobo was the right one, after hoping, hey, the list goes on and on. I saw somebody mention X10 in the comments. He was a youngster until he left. Um, mm, guys, like we need to, we need to really, and I know I'm focusing on Kaiser Chiefs, and there's a reason why, but we need to really look at this um, and 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 look at our development as a whole. Even if it means we start asking questions about the DDC, is DDC a reserve league? Is it an under? Is it a, a teen league? What is this thing we call it DDC, and what is it producing, and why is it there? Anyway, guys, um, 
going on to that topic to focus a little bit on the players. Um, last night the Pirates played. Um, well, it's not last night. The Pirates played is Kukune on uh, on the weekend, and they lost two one. And Jose Rivera was out in the media speaking about how, uh, basically speak about how he questions some of the attitude of our players. And I want to use him as the jumping spot point. But there's also questions that were raised by uh, uh, Kevin Johnson last night. Hugo Bruce has spoken about uh, Abo Mayo and whether they, are, they have the attitude to want to come, come play. And I want to briefly speak about the attitudes of players and what is happening. And I want to speak about it from the player's point of view where you look at it and, and similar to the conversation we had last week about going overseas. But you look at them and you go, guys, I'm already at Kaiser Chiefs. I'm already at Pirates. I'm already a high earner somewhere else. I play football every day. They don't bench me. They don't take me out. Why should I jump up and, and, uh, and, and put myself on the line at the end of the match? Why should I play hard? Why should I go harder? Oliveira was speaking about Ipirates, uh, his players, and he was saying that they allowed Kukune so much early, and he doesn't understand why. Early on, uh, Kukune was given a lot, and by the time they wanted to wake up, they were already down. And it's interesting because this is a similar thing to what Gavin Hunt said about your super sport, where uh, they were playing the game before sundowns. I'm forgetting who, they was, who it was. And Gavin Hunt came out and he said, I don't understand why my players switch off at a certain place. They, they were playing so well. They found the answer. They stopped doing it. And they fell off second half. We speak about Kevin Johnson, who says that, you know, Kaiser Chiefs players are incredible at training. Yo, what you mean? They look so good. But when it comes time for me to put them into the game, uh, I see a different team. Are our players hungry in our league? Do our players care? Care enough to even get better for themselves? You see the same things happening every week and you wonder, guys, are there people going the extra mile to go and get better? Are they reading? Are they bringing in other coaches? Are they, what are they doing in their spare time? Are they behooved to go do those, those things? Is it something that they, that they look at? You know, in the NBA, and, and, and no, I reference American, football, American sports a lot, but in the NBA, players hire other coaches on top of the coaches they have at the club. And they go, Yazid, in between practices, I am going to bring in somebody who's going to help me with my shooting. I'm going to go uh, in the off-season to somebody who's going to help me with my defending. I'm going to go and do these things in order for me to get better, even if it's just for myself. Our players are so complacent that they know that, ah, guys, I don't need to be good in order to, be, to, be, uh, to earn a big salary. Look at Umayo. Fine, Mayo has, has been a good striker relatively in the PSL for years now. Chigi Chigi is 38 million. Mukwana had one good game for Ibafana Bafana, he's 28 million. And do you know what? Somebody's probably going to take him up on that. Somebody's going to take him up on that. Based on what? And then you look at Mukwana and you ask him, my guy, why do you have to try hard if you know that the barest of minimums can get you the next big contract that you need to have? But then I also want to speak to the team side of these conversations. You see that players are not playing. You see that the attitude is not right. You see that certain players have not been on board for a very long time. They don't understand what you're doing or they're not, they're not there uh, mentally. They're not there emotionally. They don't care about what's going to happen. Cool, right? You see that. Yet they play the following day. Yet they play the game after that. Yet they play the game after that. Yet they play the game after that. You give them new contracts on top of that. You give them new contracts on top of that. Gumnandi. I'm a celebrity. They, they, they do press conferences. They speak. Eh? They show up at activations. They do all that stuff. Why would Santi feel like getting better now? He knows management has got his back. 
management has got his back. He's going to play. In fact, his career went up. He's going to go play. Tomorrow, the next day. And then the other thing you're doing is that you're also demoralizing that bench. There's a player that's ready, that wants to jump in, that wants to show, that wants to do things, that wants to be a force of change. Ah, bench a boy. Zo bench, zo bench, zo bench. You'll come in, make one mistake, we'll take you out again. Are we, are the structures and the way that we're playing, are those things also holding back players to want to go do these things? Is it the fact that I'm, again, I'm going to use Chiefs as an example. Is it a fact that Santi can leave Chiefs tomorrow? They can say, we're terminating your contract. And I am sure, I am sure, by Friday, he'll have a new team. Are those the type of things that are holding back? That for some reason, we would much rather lose with these old players that are not giving us anything but you've got youngsters in the bench who you could lose with, but they'll be learning. What makes a player want to be hungry there? And that's why I'm saying it's, it's twofold for me. It's twofold for me. Number one is the players themselves. Do you want to get better? Last week we spoke about how they don't go overseas because it's uncomfortable overseas. Because overseas, you are a foreigner. Your family is not there. You have to work. There's people wanting to take your job. He's working harder than you. You have to do this. You have to do this. You have to do this. It's so much that they go, you know what? I'd much rather go back home. Think about your Keegan Dollies. Apparently, he's broken his foot now. So I don't want to be too harsh on him, but he's broken his foot now. Ever since coming back, what has he given us? Yet every coach starts him. When he's available, when he's fit, he starts. What are the other players learning around them? So guys, it's, 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 it's a very interesting conversation. Um, and, and I wanted to have it from that point of view, but also from the po coach's point of view. I don't want to hear Rivero talking about uh, my team is one, two, and three, or my team is not good enough, or my team is not up to it. What is his role in this? What is Kevin Johnson's role? Oh, my players, I'm, I'm unhappy about my players. Those, that same player is playing the following day. That same player is renewed, their contract is renewed, renewed the following day. That same player is not replaced with people who are better. So then coach, management, I'm looking at you guys and I'm saying, oh, Mara, guys, why, why would I be hungry? Why would I try hard? Why would I go so hard? You look at Pirates. Is that a team that looks like it's, it's genuinely going for the Champions League? Genuinely, that they have all focused on it. They understand it's a big deal. They understand that that's where they need to be going. Does it look like it? Which other team in the league looks like it? I guess Stellenbosch is starting to wake up, but what happens at those teams? And are we taking too much time trying to develop these, these traits and hoping, again, that luck thing I spoke about, hoping that, you know, tomorrow... Uh, uh, U U Utsepo is going to wake up and, you know, he's going to be have the right mind state and he's going to be in the right place and we just need to give him time. Two, three years down the line, we still need to give him time. You know, he still needs to learn and grow. Do those teams not go, uh, as in, we gave you a chance, we're getting rid of you now. Does that not inspire hunger? Does that, besides hunger, does that inspire does that not inspire fear? So Kevin Johnson, Jose Rivero, Kevin Hunt, what are you guys doing in order to make sure that these players are, that these players, even if you don't want to play for the thing, that you are in a situation where you have to play. I've said this about sundowns before. I've said this about sundowns. When I'm playing as a sundowns player, I understand two things. One, I understand the pressure that on the pitch, I need to get results. 
And the reason why I need to get results is one, the standards are high. Two, there's someone at Benchin sitting there currently right now, Esim Sainil, who's wanting my job. So whether they like me or not, who can take my job? Then on top of that, I also know that who's going to take my job? They're going to bring him in Xasa, who's taking my job tomorrow. So even if I stay, I need to work hard. Even if I stay, there's performance bonuses that all of us as a team have to work towards in order to get all of our money. That's a competitive environment. That's an environment, even Rulani, let's be honest, if Rulani were to lose the league, if Rulani doesn't win the Champions League this year, maybe doesn't win it next year, he knows in the back of his mind that yes, Sundowns, you know, he said it, I'm the least most important person at Sundowns. He said it himself. That's a competitive environment. Now tell me, what's Kevin Johnson's mandate? What was Atazwani's mandate? What was Mulifin Tseki's mandate? What is... Uh, let's see. What is Sid Ramovich's mandate? What is uh, John Maduka's mandate? Uh, what What are the different coaches? What are, What are, What is Pablo Franco Martin's mandate? What are the mandates that these guys are given? One. And what is the punishment for not reaching those mandates? Slow city time. Slow city. Give them time. Let them cook. What? Dot, dot, dot. Nice. Sometimes is running away at the top. What is your mandate? Let's go a step further. What is your technical director's mandate? What is the five-year plan at our PSL clubs? How is that being funded and resourced and supported by the guys on top of them? Winning doesn't start on the pitch, but it starts at the top and it filters all the way through. We just see the end result. But let's ask these questions too when we criticize players, when we criticize coaches, when we criticize uh, technical directors and those guys. The, can we speak about those things? Kwanele Kopo and Tabo September right now, Chipa United, what is the mandate? What is Chipa's five year plan? They've been in the league 11 years? Is it 11 years? Can we say, can we say ourselves, Guti? They've, they've gone forward, they've progressed, they've, they've made a significant change. Chiefs, as bad as it is, finished fifth last year. Consistently finishes in the top five. As bad as it is for Ikeza Chiefs. What does that say about everybody else? And all of that filters down all the way to the bottom. Now I'm going to Jose. You see Jose? I can bet you he understands that he's safe. You won the MTN8. You won the MTN8. You won the NetBank Cup and the MTN8 last year. Don't worry about it. You didn't qualify for the Champions League. It's okay, man. We'll see it next year. We'll see it next year. Chiefs has told us. Chiefs has actually came out and told us. 9-9. Nine, nine. Bob Keza said that basically they're waiting for Sundowns to come back down. They're waiting for Sundowns to slip and fall and come back down. He said that uh, it took Liverpool 30 years to win the league. That's what he said. So he was like, that's how it is sometimes. Imagine, chairman of the club. Chairman of the club. What do we say about the other ones? Or is it that us as fans are way more connected to our clubs? Us as fans are, are way more demanding of our clubs. Us as fans want to see certain things. And maybe our goals, our ways to measure them and all of that are not, are not in line with the club. Maybe the club is fine not winning a star. Maybe the club is fine watching Sundowns do everything. Maybe they're fine with it. Yeet, we are the problem for asking more. And we're going to sit in a situation where we're going to have to hope 
and pray not that something happens. Hope and pray that tomorrow uh, uh, Bobby, Bobby cares about the Champions League. Hope and pray that Supersport, multi-choice wakes up tomorrow and says, you know what, Supersport, we're going to give you 100 million as your budget next year. Hope and pray that all of those things just happen out of the blue. I even want to speak to Sundowns. If, if we're being honest about the Sundowns, I even want to speak to Sundowns. You guys are lucky to have an owner that cares as much. You guys are lucky. I know a lot of people say it's through hard work and all of those things. Guys, the vision, the mission, and all of that were brought by Upetris Putin. You guys are lucky. And now we're in a place where we're hoping the whole league, we're just hoping that you guys, hey, I don't know who, Mutsipe, who the next Mutsipe is. I'm hoping that Christoph Wiese is going to buy Kaiser Chiefs tomorrow. I'm hoping that whoever the next day, Nicky Oppenheimer, will buy uh, uh, King Cape Town City the following day. I'm hoping. All, that, all I'm doing is that I'm hoping. And that's a sad place for our league to be in. And that's a sad place for our management and leaderships as a whole to be in. Because in as much as we complain about the Kaiser Chiefs, if we were fighting this hard about the Kaiser Chiefs, what about the, the eight teams below it? Last year there were 11 teams below Chiefs. We don't speak about them when we speak about these things. You know, but anyway, guys, um, thank you so much for joining me. I will come back. I will be live at half past seven um, in order for us to speak, to watch, to have the watch along for Orlando Pirates. So please do me the favor of joining me there. Guys, uh, subscribe, follow right now. If you can click the follow button um, on TikTok, if you can click the, the subscribe button, sorry, on uh, YouTube. Um, I do, we do this every day. There is a live show every day, Monday to Thursday at seven o'clock. Um, unless there's a watch along at half past seven. Friday is half past 12, where it's my members, the guys we have a WhatsApp group with, where really I, I, I give them credit because that's where we iron out a lot of these ideas and these questions, and we ask each other a lot of questions, and then I learn a lot from those guys. So Friday, they get a chance to do what I'm doing now and get their thoughts across uh, without everybody else being in. So uh, if you want to be part of that group of mine, uh, head on over to YouTube, click on subscribe, click on join, and you'll gain access to the WhatsApp group. Trust me, there's a lot of smart people there, and we have a lot of very interesting debates, conversations, and we speak about a lot of things on that side. I do also release content uh, almost on a daily basis. So please check out my content, share it, like it, uh, do all of that nice stuff because it does really help grow the platform. Um, and thank you guys so much for joining me. I will be back at uh, half past seven for the Pirates Watch Along. Thank you guys. Bye guys.